You're watching KLTX, Channel 15, serving the city of Lufkin. Welcome to Memorial Cooking Innovations. I'm Leanne Anderson, Registered Dietitian Nutritionist with CHI St. Luke's, and this is Adriana Arnold joining us once again. She's our Education Specialist here at the Polk Education Center. Thank you, Leanne, for having me today well, on the show. We're glad to have you back. Yes. So fall is just around the corner, right? and once it cools down, there's nothing better than some homemade soup, and today we're going to make a healthy chili along with some cornbread. So it's always a good combo when the air is cold. Yes, yeah, sounds lovely. So, okay, so this is a white chicken chili recipe, so it's a little bit of a different take on your traditional chili. First of all, we have oil heating in our um, pan here, and we're going to add about a pound of chicken that we've diced up. You want to keep in mind when you um, use chicken and, and cut it on a cutting board to make sure you wash that cutting board well before you use it to use anything else to prevent any um, bacteria that would cause some food poisoning. Okay. And then what would we add next? We add some onion. This is about a medium onion chopped finely. And mm. then some garlic. A little bit of garlic, our favorite garlic in the tube. Yes. Just give it a little squeeze. nice and brown okay. and then I see you've got some jalapeno pepper over there yes we're gonna dice some pepper to make it a little bit more spicy just about a half of a jalapeno pitted and seeded I'm going to cut that up and a word of caution if you use fresh jalapeno you want to be careful and not touch your eyes after you've cut a jalapeno yes. because the Spicy oil will, will um, cause a little burning sensation. And then we also decided we'd just cut, cut the jalapeno on a piece of parchment paper rather than getting a cutting board and, and getting that dirty. So that's a kind of a little fast tip to help, help with your cleanup. Now you can add, add the jalapeno, you can add more or less depending on how spicy you want your dish. Um, when we made this recipe the other day, it was pretty spicy, but we decided that we liked that by the time you add some of your toppings and that sort of thing. Just gives it a little kick. Yeah. So this recipe is going to be low in fat, low in sodium, and um, has some lean protein with the chicken and also some beans that we'll add later and a lot of fiber as well. So it fits into that heart healthy um, dishes that we all wanna try to eat more often. We're also going to make this dish gluten free and yes. we'll talk a little bit more about that as, yeah. um, and why we, we've been including some gluten free <clears throat> recipes here lately. So we're just going to brown the chicken for a few minutes until it's cooked through and then we'll add the rest of our ingredients. Okay. Our chicken looks nice looks and like it's cooked. cooked through. The juices are running clear. That's always a good indication. That didn't take very long at all since we cut the chicken small. What do we no, add next? We're going to add our green chilies. Okay, and that's a can of diced green chilies, a small four ounce can. That's going to give it some more heat. And then, we'll and, go. and then our spices. Yes. So. Cayenne. Cayenne pepper. Our 
oregano, and then our cumin. A little bit more heat. Yes. So, with that coated, I want to kind of warm up a little bit. So, we mentioned earlier we're making this gluten free. Um, so, Adriana, you were diagnosed with celiac disease earlier this year, yes, correct? Yes, I was. And how has that journey been for you? Well, Leanne, it's been a little hard and difficult at times. Um, it's it's very difficult to go out and search and find gluten-free options in Lufkin, Texas. Right. So, um, but I've learned there are certain things you have to look for at the grocery store. There are certain emblems on the packaging. Um, but I mean, it's a it's a learning learn in progress kind of thing to do. Right. So. And so I've had um, several clients that have had had similar situation and um, with celiac disease you have to completely avoid gluten and gluten comes from wheat rye and um, barley barley thank you <laughs> so um, those are the three um, grains that contain gluten and with celiac disease even a tiny amount of gluten will cause symptoms and some people also follow gluten-free diets for other reasons besides that and you can be a little more flexible depending on your situation when it comes to that. Right, right. so the difference really with the gluten-free um, like gluten intolerance and celiac is cross-contamination that's like the huge thing mm -hmm. so when you're celiac you cannot have anything cooked in an area where they already do and prep with wheat in it. So okay. it has to be a designated area. And then gluten intolerance, they can still have small increments of gluten. So they don't have to worry about the cross contamination. Okay. And then once you do have it in your system, it does stay for six weeks. So once you've ingested it, it will be there and it just floats around in your small intestine. So <laughs> causes lots of issues. Yes. So. Okay, so we're gonna add some broth. That's one thing that, that we've discovered. Most broths have wheat added to it, so we did find a gluten-free broth. And when you're reading a label for gluten-free, what do you look for? So there's a couple different emblems out there that you wanna look at, um, but for on the, on the broth, um, on the backs are actually, let's see, on the back side, um, there's a little leaf and it shows that it's gluten-free. Um, along with some other great things. And then on the beans that we have that says gluten-free down at the bottom down there. And then on the flour, this is actually, it means it's certified. So when it's in an actual circle and it has the GF on there, it's certified. So there's different ones to look at when you're out there, but all three of these are gluten-free. Okay. So. And if it doesn't say gluten-free, yes. assume it's not, or you may also see may be um, processed where wheat products are processed. Right. So that's where you would get some contamination as well. Yes. So and then the other thing you have to look at is that your manufacturers and your label. So even if it doesn't state gluten free on the actual packaging, um, the facility itself could have a gluten free error. They could cross contaminate. And so you have from to look at that products. too from their other products. Yeah. So just like you stated, you can look for that emblem and then also look on the back part and see if it says manufactured and there's a list that you can get. So it's just kind of a lot. It's tricky, different things you have to be out there and yeah. looking. You may think something's gluten free. It may say it's certified or it has a GF on it and then it possibly isn't gluten free so because okay. they don't cater towards the celiac so okay all right yeah. so all right so we're going to bring this to a boil uh, for, uh, first we're going to add um our beans we're using the um cannellini beans and that was this package there are no added sodium or salt you could also use navy beans pinto beans really any kind of bean that you might want to want to um, have or that you have on hand. So we're gonna bring this to a boil, and while we do that, we'll make our cornbread. So while our soup simmers, that's gonna take about 30 minutes, we're going to make our cornbread. And the advantage to this recipe is that it's extremely low in sodium and also in the trans fat, which is the unhealthy fat. A lot of your cornbread mixes will have hydrogenated oil um, and those are gonna be those trans fats that aren't so heart healthy. And we're also making it gluten free as well. Mm -hmm. 
So All right. corn cornmeal is gluten free, and of course we have our gluten free flour. So we're going to take three fourths of a cup of each of those. Decided I need a three fourths cup measuring cup. Be much yes. easier. They don't come in a, in a set though, usually. There's the flour, and then with our cornmeal. There's also corn flour, and we're using the cornmeal for the cornbread just because it gives it a little better, um, firmer texture. Okay. okay. And then to that, we add a tablespoon of baking powder and so it's going to make it rise. And then two tablespoons of just granulated sugar. This is something you could reduce or leave out if you don't like a sweeter taste to your cornbread. And then we're going to mix those dry ingredients together. And just, you can use a whisk, a fork, anything just to help distribute the baking powder and the sugar with the flour. And then we just right. set that aside. And I'm gonna take one egg and just beat that lightly. And to that, add a cup of milk. And it helps to just slowly add that and mix it so it comes together nicely. And then to this, we're also going to add a fourth of a cup of canola oil. All right. And canola oil is another one of those heart healthy fats. So do you have to use canola oil? No, you could use like a soy oil. Some people will use olive oil or um, avocado oil has become available, so it kind of depends on your taste. The canola oil does have a more neutral flavor okay. than the olive or the avocado oil. And so then we're going to just add the milk mixture to the, the dry ingredients and just mix them until they just start to come together. So you don't want to mix it really well because that will make your bread a little bit tough. We also have the oven um, heating to 400 degrees and sprayed our muffin tin with some cooking spray. This recipe makes 12 muffins. And so now that's just kind of coming together. We're going to add some chopped green onion, about two green onions that we finally chopped, a cup of corn. You can use canned, frozen, or fresh, but the frozen works pretty well fast and easy, and then two tablespoons of chopped um, pickled jalapenos to give it, again, some kick, yes. <laughs> a little bit of heat. So while that's mixing up, tell us a little more about your gluten-free experiences as far as eating out. So eating out is very tough, obviously. Having celiac is tough in general, so eating out is, I've had to learn um, trial and error. So when I first mm -hmm. got diagnosed, we went out and um, we actually went to Del Rio. And I asked and made sure, because Mexican food's my favorite, and that's actually one option that you can eat with celiac because they're, they're very accommodated towards it. Um, so we went to Del Rio and I asked, and they have a menu that they, they give you. So everything on the menu is gluten-free and their nachos al carbon, carbon is uh, gluten-free. Oh, so, okay. And then their chips, obviously, and their salsa. So that was my first initials. Like, I want some Mexican food and I need to know if it's uh, gluten-free. Right. So, um, but if you're wanting to go fast food option, it's a little tougher. 
Um, there's two places in Lufkin as far as um, that cater to gluten free, and that's Chick Fil A and um, Chalotsky's. So okay, they both have the designated area, so they don't do any cross contamination there. So, so for truly gluten free, they need to have a designated yes. gluten free area. So okay, um, but if you need to look for a gluten free option at a restaurant, they have an app on your phone. It's called GF Find Me. And that's gluten free find me um, and then down there on there you can download all of the gluten free recipes that are in the local area around you oh, that's I a great see. option and it's actually free okay. so good all right so we can just fill these muffin cups usually when you fill them up about two-thirds full because they will rise It's kind of like a Tex-Mex in a sense. Yes. You could probably put fresh jalapenos in these too if you wanted to. Okay, so we've got those filled evenly, so we'll just stick those in the oven. Perfect. And our soup's still simmering. It's got a few minutes left to simmer. And so if somebody wanted to um, find out more about how to, to eat with celiac disease, what would be some suggestions? Well, um, the first suggestion would probably go see your local dietitian. Um, they would have some great recommendations for you. And mm -hmm. then also go in and check on the National Celiac Association's website. Um, they have a manual that breaks every single brand and manufacturer out there um, that you need to know about celiac and gluten intolerance. Um, and then there's some great um, tips on there as far as what you need to do for your nutrition intake and then to make sure you're getting enough nutrition and then also recipes out there too. Right. So sometimes you can lack some vitamins and right. minerals that come in your grain products if you're not careful. Just yes. like any other type of, of diet, honestly, you have to have that balance of nutrients. Right. Well, I appreciate you sharing your experiences yes. with us. Yes, yeah, it's been difficult. Um, uh, anyone out there that has celiac, I, I hope that you can find your find the right recommendations that can help you um, because it's definitely a tricky one to deal with. Right, so. definitely. Our muffins turned out nicely, so those um, we'll let those just cool a little bit before okay. we take them out. And our soup's been simmering for about 30 minutes. I'm going to add just a little bit of salt, salt and pepper, um, not too much to keep it on the lower sodium side, but you know, you can always adjust the seasonings to your taste at home. And then we're going to take this off the heat and let it cool <clears throat> just a little bit. <clears throat> so Adrienne, I meant to ask you earlier, um, how did you come about um, finding out you had celiac? What were your symptoms and how were you diagnosed? Okay. Um, well, I had a bad hive reaction that I never could figure out what was wrong and what was mm -hmm. going on. And so after going to different providers, I finally went back to my primary and um, we had some lab work done. Um, we didn't, it's not normal to have like a gluten panel done. Okay, so I had already done run. an environmental, a food, a dairy. And so I was like, okay, what have we, what have we haven't, what have we not done? And she was like, you need to do a gluten panel. So we tested for a gluten panel. Um, and she sent me my results two days later and it went ahead and showed on there that I had the gluten intolerance and then celiac and told me to avoid it immediately. Okay. Um, and then when I was thinking about it, I was like, well, I had all of the symptoms. So I had the hive reaction, I had the bloating, the constipation, um, I had the anemia, which I've always been anemic, but it was just increased. And then um, just some other abdominal problems I had too in my GI. So okay. um, thinking back on it, I was like, wow, I really did have all of these, but they were just dormant because I wasn't paying attention to it. I thought it was normal. Right. Um, but the highs was my, my key factor and what I really wanted to get fixed because it was very sore and painful to have to deal with. Right, so. right. And so what did you do once you had the blood work done and avoided the gluten? Was there okay. more to that or? Yeah, so after um, I had that all done, I went and saw a specialist in Nacogdoches, um, and then we went ahead and signed up to do a biopsy done. So I scheduled that procedure done. A couple of months later, I went in and had that done, biopsied um, about a fourth of my intestine, and then got that back, and that tells you whether or not which stage you're in. 
Okay. So after I found that, I was told I was in the later stage of celiac. Um, just meant that I had to completely take it away from my diet and just keep it monitor, uh, monitored that way. So if okay. I had any flare-ups, um, I just took you know an antibiotic um, and then a topical cream to go ahead and treat the rash if I ever got the um, ingested any gluten from here on out. So okay. um, just by eliminating the gluten is how you treat celiac. There's no diagnosis. It also it is an autoimmune disease. So okay. by you doing that, that's how you cure, um, you know, the celiac that you have. Okay. And so. you've been pretty successful then so far in yes. keeping the symptoms away? I've only had one um, problem and one complication, and that was just a couple of weeks back. Um, but other than that, yeah, I've been doing pretty good with it and keeping it monitored the way I should. Okay, great. So, yeah. Well, that's a, a great story um, as far as how to detect it and just some things right. to be aware of. All right, so our next step with the soup is we're going to add the, the creamy part. Okay. So that's going to be a cup of sour cream. And then we're going to stir in um, a couple tablespoons of cornstarch. That's going to be our thickener. And you want to get that. that incorporated before we add the liquid because it'll won't really get suspended in the mixture if you do it that way. Okay. Okay, and then about a cup of milk. We're using 1% milk to kind of counteract the fat in the sour cream. Okay. And mix that up until it's smooth. So we don't have any any lumps in our chili. This smells really good. It looks delicious. Okay. Okay. Looks pretty good. So now we're going to just kind of slowly add this a little bit at a time. If you add it too much, it might get lumpy. some cornstarch stuck to the side there and maybe with that we take that wire whisk too that's going to help get it mixed in and smoothed out so it's coming together nicely nice and creamy you can see all the spices and seasonings in the peppers so I think we're ready to serve this up Alrighty. So you'll hand me that bowl over there. Okay. Add a little yeah, bit I'm more. Add a little bit more. Fill that a bowl juice. up. And then we'll garnish it. You can garnish it with whatever you like, but kind of the guacamole will kind of counteract some of the spice. Connie sauce to add a little color. Alrighty. And we've got some blue corn tortilla chips that we're serving with that as well. And then of course the corn muffins. So let's go ahead and take a couple of those out. Nice and fluffy. Nice, yes. Okay, it looks right. delicious. So what we've done today is made a um, white chicken chili, which is a little twist on the traditional type of chili. We made it low with sodium, lower in fat, and also um, high in fiber with the beans and gluten-free, along with our um, homemade corn muffins, which really didn't take much time to make and don't have the uh, trans fat that a lot of your um, mixes have. Right. Plus we added a little corn to that to also give it some more fiber. So. I think as soon as the, the cold sets in, this will be a great recipe you can put together for your family in probably 30 minutes or less and enjoy. So thank you, Adriana, again, for sharing your um, experiences yes. with the celiac disease and being gluten-free. Well, thank you for having me on the show. I really enjoyed it. 
This is going to turn out to be a great meal. I think so too. So, and thank you all for joining us as we continue to change the world one bite at a time. time.